Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, Missouri is again sold out for Monster Jam. These Monster Jam fans know that when you come to the Jones Dome, you see some of the greatest action of the year. It's one of the biggest floors the superstars of Monster Jam compete on, and that means big air and big action. Pablo Huffaker takes over the reins for Team Gravedigger to battle Tom Mentz, Max D, and an all-star lineup racing from St. Louis next. Who's ready for Monster Jam? Hold on, baby. Here goes the camper. Tom Mintz, seventh world championship. Dennis Anderson is the world racing champion. sold out and it should be one of the great monster jam races of the year uh, maybe the longest and fastest track we've ever seen at least this side of the world finals in las vegas you're going to see it right here on speed hi again everyone i'm scott douglas ken stall will be joining me for the call of the action here in just a few moments but we've got to start by talking about this awesome course and a driver who figures to be a favorite to be in the finals and maybe the winner here tonight i'm talking about the hot shoe behind the wheel of the grave digger pablo huffaker and pablo you come into this one. You know the fans in St. Louis love you, and you know this track is bad fast. What do you think? Uh, you betcha. You know, we were out here checking this thing out earlier today. I went ahead and took the truck out back, stepped the gear ratio up a little bit. I went ahead and made it a little bit faster to try to compensate. The idea was that this track is always, this floor has always been so big. The track's been fast and big, but now it's wider. The turns are more sweeping. Is it going to carry a lot more speed and momentum? Well, it really it should, you know, but I was watching the uh, Pro Arena trucks run there a little earlier, and you're going to have to kind of drive that corner carefully it looks like it's kind of tacky so if you try to dig into it too deep or or, or too tight in that thing it might flip you over so you know it's going to be a driver's course here tonight and you guys you, you like it to be a driver's course don't you absolutely you know the more i get to drive the truck the better i feel like i can do a lot of grave digger fans gonna be behind you but it's a star-studded field he'll be taking on the likes of tom Metz, maximum destruction and the star-studded lineup you're going to see all the racing action right here on speed Good call, Scott. Let's take a look at the rest of the drivers here in our field of trucks. They're going to try to beat Pablo Huffaker. Trey Myers will be here in the Iron Warrior coming out of Maryland. And Dale Mitchell coming out of Memphis, Tennessee, will be behind the wheel of the Prowler, a Chevy concept truck making 1,800 horsepower. Michael Botters is back in the Black Stallion, a 25-year-plus veteran in the 2003 Ford. Aaron Basil, one of the Basil brothers here in Blacksmith from Shaw, Oregon, the 1941 Willys. Everybody loves it. It's a beautiful truck. Scarlet Bandit, of course, Don Creighton, who did a great job in freestyling just one show ago, will be out here trying to win in racing. And then this is Aaron's brother, Darren Basil, in the El Matador, again from Shaw, Oregon. Alan Pizzo from Brentwood, Tennessee, inside of the Predator, another Chevy concept truck. And John Zimmer with T-Max from Arlington, Vermont, the 2004 Ford with 540 cubic inches underneath the hood. Next up, David Smith in King Crunch, coming out of Spring, Texas, a 2003 Chevy for the Bowtie Vans, and Pablo Huffaker, we just saw him, representing the Gravedigger Camp from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. And we don't want to forget the seven-time champ, Tom Mintz in Maximum Destruction, who, by the way, rolled over in the opening ceremonies. We'll find out what he has for the rest of the crowd here tonight. Now, let's take a look at the recap here. As we was just speaking about that, Scott Douglas back up into the booth with me. Scott? Well, here's what happens. You know, we love to say hi to our fans with big introductions. The trucks love to come out and say hi, put on a little taste of freestyle. Tom may have gave him a little too much freestyle. Yeah, I think he went over the top just a bit, and it kind of bit him. We heard Pablo talking about how tacky that dirt is, and it got him. Let's go on board with him. How can you not be dizzy? Look at this. Those are cyclones, and that's how you end up on your roof. It looks like just cosmetic damage, though. The truck did not get hurt, it doesn't appear. So Tom Metz and Maximum Destruction will be ready when we go racing. And Pablo's just looking at him, shaking his head. But Tom, we haven't even started yet. It is going to be a big night in St. Louis. This huge, massive floor gets ready for Monster Jam qualifying. You're going to see all the action next on Speed. Monster Jam is brought to you by the new F-Series Super Duty, built to work harder for you and by the U.S. Air Force, celebrating 60 years of innovation in air, space, and cyberspace. 
They are on their feet and rocking in St. Louis. Every seat is sold for Monster Jam. Here's the way they'll qualify, two at a time. But again, they're not racing each other at this point. They are racing the clock. 11 trucks will take to the track. First up, of course, Black Stallion and Predator, and then they will follow as you see the order on our screen. We have great onboard looks. Upper left, we're over Tom Mintz's shoulder. Upper right, there's John Zimmer. You're looking right at the T-Max driver. Lower left, Darren Basil and El Matador. And then the lower right will be on board again over the shoulder shot with David Smith and King Crunch. Coming to the line for qualifying, Michael Botter. Several times, a Thunder National Champion, but he also knows how to run these big floors. He will be in the Black Stallion. And in the other lane, Alan Pizzo, the Predator. I guess between these two guys, Ken, there's almost 50 years of Monster Jam experience behind the wheel. Yeah, maybe even pushing 60, to be honest with you. I mean, they've been around for a long time, and man, Pizzo just schooled him right there at the starting line. How about Alan Pizzo looking to come off the line? And he oh, and he makes a mistake right here. They talked about the turn being tacked. He's actually very loose right there. Now, this is a St. Louis-style course. We call it that because this type of twin oval racing was invented here in the Edward Jones zone. You know, something we talked about with Alan Pizzo struggling to take a look at Mike Botter. It's just kind of creeping across the finish line. I wonder if he broke something there. But Alan Pizzo, the front end on the truck is very low. And you can see when he got on the brakes, it really transferred a lot of weight to the front end. So when he turned in, he had a lot of bite. And it just actually turned in too good and it swung the back end around. Ken, we had talked on a previous show, I think it was when we were back in Houston, about the different tires he had on the back, but he's changed that. He has cleats on the back now. Yeah, he's looking for a little more traction and a wise move because he could use even more yet. So Alan Pizzo and Michael Botters clearly will see near the bottom of this 11-truck bracket. Let's continue with qualifying. Back on the starting line, Dawn Creighton is here with Scarlet Bandits. This is unique for her because Jimmy, her husband, has the other part of the team elsewhere. She's on her own this weekend. Without him here, I'm curious on how I'm going to do. This is my first real big show without him. Um, I keep him. He's always in the back of my head whether I want him there or not, so I'm sure I'll hear him <laughs> throughout the night. I guess we'll leave that alone and move over to David Smith and King Crunch. We talked with David earlier, who said he's got a lot of questions about the fuel mix he's running here. We uh, tried to dial in a little bit more on fuel. We've been off on our fuel for a while, and um, the trucks have always ran okay. I mean, they stayed competitive, but the, you know we had more that we just couldn't utilize, you know, because the fuel was wrong. And uh, finally, got with uh, Gary Celine. He takes care of the fuel for a couple other teams that are out there, and. And uh, I got with him, and he's got my fuel system straight on both trucks. So hopefully, I mean, we're still right at the beginning stages of it, but I think that everything's going to be good. I mean, they, they seem to be, you know, kicking off pretty decent right now. So, well, time to tell, I guess, qualifying, we'll know. You know, if it's not right, I'll change it again. Trucks are even heading to the first turn. This is qualifying. Again, they'll turn away from each other at the first turn. Then the trucks will turn toward each other and sky it out heading for home. I love this type of race. Course. And David Smith got the better of it. He will cross the line first, and clearly he will set the time to beat early on. Not bad. Looks like that fuel mix is pretty good tonight. Yeah, less than 20 seconds there, 19.65 the time to beat. And you talked about that fuel. He spoke about the fuel. It is critical. And what they're looking for is a good air-fuel mix. You're going into each and every cylinder. You can have a hot cylinder. You can have a cold cylinder. You want to get that distribution of fuel and air equivalent throughout that engine so that it runs perfectly. Looks to me just right off the bat like anything under 20 seconds should put you in the upper part of this bracket. And of course, you want to get a higher speed so you have a better first round matchup. Coming up, more qualifying from the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Stay with us. More Monster Jam ahead. Oh, yeah, they're living it live in St. Louis. You can see it's just a family affair, great family entertainment. Make sure any time Monster Jam gets anywhere near you, you live it live. Let's take a look at qualifying thus far. King Crunch, far and away the fastest at 19.65 seconds. So back onto the track and pulling to the line, El Matador, Darren Basil. Now, we talked to his teammate earlier about the fuel situation. Darren, give us a little more detail on getting these engines fine-tuned. I think we got the motors tuned as good as they can get for now and uh, they're making quite a bit of horsepower so we're, we're going to go out there and lay down some good passes and hopefully get one or two in racing but that's the goal. How about
about this in the other lane, his brother, Aaron. Well, we asked Aaron about the sibling rivalry. He says anytime they're on the track together, he wants to get across the line first. I always run him pretty hard. Um, just the fact that I got to live with him and he brings it up all the time. But it um, doesn't really matter who's on the line. Um, I want to win every time. And uh, being my brother and knowing how he runs, it just makes it that much more fun. got a slight edge off the line and El Matador over his brother. Oh, but he's got a problem in the turn. He hooks it up on his two wheels, and now Blacksmith is having the better run. Again, they're not racing, but they want the better qualifying time, and it looks like Aaron Basil and Blacksmith will have the quicker time. Oh, look at Darren Close. Her rules are not racing, but I promise you they're racing. <laughs> 20.54, not bad. It won't be among the top two or three, I'll bet, by the time we're done. But still, not a bad run for Aaron Basil. Here's what happened to El Matador. He just kind of hooked the edge you talk about. Yeah, and he got off to such a great start. I mean, he was aggressive. He was ready to go. And unfortunately, yeah, that turned bit him. And that's what Pablo Hoffaker was talking about earlier tonight. Because, believe me, Darren Basil opened strong and closed strong. It was that turn that cost him time in qualifying. Well, back to the line. Iron Warrior, Trey Myers, the teammate truck to Michael Botters in the Black Stallion will be in one lane. And in the other lane, we will be getting a look at a new driver in a familiar truck, John Zimmer, who is proud as he can be to be behind the wheel of the Traxxas T-Max. We got his thoughts earlier before he went qualifying. The Traxxas T-Max is an awesome piece. I mean, it's so neat to be in a truck that the kids can buy as an RC truck. You know, you feel like a little kid just in the big toy. Um, the Traxxas people are awesome. They want us to go out there and run that truck hard all the time. And, you know, that's basically what we're told is go win at all costs. Very fast, long straightaway. You get some big speeds. And the trick is to keep your speed through those corners without bicycling or spinning out. Or So in the T-Max truck, uh, it handles amazing. So corners are usually my thing. So. Zimmer get off the line. Myers looks like he has a problem, but Zimmer is flying. Now, what has happened, Ken, with the additional dirt and this floor actually having more room to work with, they can get more speed in the straightaways because it's a more of a sweeping turn than the hairpins we've had here in the past. Well, the other thing, too, that I'm noticing, the guys turning left, and we've heard this story before, seem to be doing a little better than the guys turning right. 19.53 for T-Max. So again, anything under 20 seconds is going to put you in the upper echelon. Let's go on board. That's just an awesome launch. That truck transferring all the way to the rear tires, just planting those rear tires so they can't spin. Head to the left hand or pick up the throttle right at the apex of the turn, right in the center of the turn, and then carry some big speed out. Just drove it perfectly. What a nice run. You just went on board with, to this point, the fastest run of the night, 1953 puts John Zimmer and the Traxxas Team Act number one in qualifying. But guess what? Some big guns are still to come. More qualifying when we come back. Monster Jam in St. Louis. Capacity crowd. Every seat sold out. It's been sold out for days. This is one of those great events year after year. It's worth traveling to. If you live anywhere in the Midwest, look online. Find out when the St. Louis event is. Get your tickets and come on out. This is always a special, special night of racing and freestyle when we come to the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Well, we're back at qualifying for the race bracket. Dale Mitchell bringing out the Prowler out of the Alan Pizzo team, Dale out of Memphis, Tennessee. And in the other lane, Pablo Huffaker, who's representing for Team Gravedigger tonight. We talked to Pablo earlier. He said, hey, put some new parts on for this big course in St. Louis. We threw some new parts on it for this weekend. Um, it's got some new sway bars on it, so we'll a little bit, be a little bit tighter through the turns. And um, you know, we have a different motor in it this week than what we had in Detroit. So you know, we ought to be making just a little bit more horsepower this week if we can you know, apply it and get it all to the ground so is the biggest thing here. Time to qualify. Digger, Prowler. surprise that Pablo is out of the shoot big time. He kind of bicycles the turn, but pulls it right back down, and he'll carry big speed into this final turn. Pablo Huffaker, I think, is going to put down the fastest time. That's the best one we've seen, and indeed, the clock will reflect it. Look at that time. Pablo Huffaker and Gravedigger will come up on the screen at 19.13 seconds. 
far and away the best time of the night. What a run for Pablo. And I, I would typically say he entered that turn too hard, but he really didn't. He was on two wheels, and if he would have picked up the throttle just a little bit quicker, he'd have kicked the back end out. It would have been quicker yet. You can see right here, problems for the Prowler. He really struggled through the turn, eventually hitting the turning post. But Pablo Huffaker just definitely on the throttle hard right there. There's some more left inside of that truck. But that first turn, man, he was aggressive, had it hung out on the edge about as hard as you could go. So Gray Digger moves into the number one spot in qualifying with one truck to go, but that one truck happens to be 